My name is Pierce Delahunt. I am an activist educator. I call myself a social emotional leftist. I'm also very privileged uh, as a white, hetero, uh, wealthy cis male. Um, I am not uh, profiting off of these classes. This one uh, is going to get a little more medical. And I want to be clear, I am not a doctor. Um, I do not study anatomy. So we're going to keep everything very basic. Without further ado, patriarchy in genital science and genital medicine. Um, and we're going to uh, be focused on everything medically accurate. Want to emphasize that uh, we are science grounded here. Um, and at the same time, you know, we can have fun with it. While I was creating this, I was listening to Pussy Riot to help get me in the mood. Um, and I think. Uh, the basis of everything we're going to be talking about can basically be summarized with one of their lines. Don't play stupid. Don't play dumb. Vagina is where you're really from. So some things to know about. Uh, there is the vulva versus the vagina, parentheses versus the urethra. Vagina and urethra, two different things. Um, urethra is uh, the P passage. Vagina is the reproductive passage. And the vulva versus the vagina, that's the difference between the external and the internal genitalia. Um, there uh, is something that uh, at the bottom here, Dr. Harriet Lerner, uh, who's a clinical psychologist, she calls it psychic genital mutilation. What is not named does not exist. And the fact that uh, we typically colloquially refer to the entirety of the female genitalia as the vagina, um, uh, rather than acknowledging the external uh, genitalia of the vulva. Um, and in fact, like most medical textbooks will cover the internal, you'll like, I have, you know, a memory of the fallopian tubes, that imagery in my head. I don't think that I have ever seen in my own education uh, in any health class or sex ed class uh, depictions of the entirety of the external genitalia, uh, including the uh, labia majora or minora, the clitoris, and all that. Um, and uh, that is a, a psychic genital mutilation. The condition of hysteria, the root of the word, comes from uterus, and the condition was named because it was believed that that condition was caused by the uterus wandering around. Um, and uh, sometimes history presents us with metaphors that are almost too perfect. But the idea that uh, a uterus does, that does not know its rightful place is creating uh, these uncontrollable women, uh, I, think, I think that that says a lot. Um, and I do want to acknowledge that uh, I, I will be slipping in and out of, I'm trying not to, but I'll be slipping in and out of language that um, uh, is uh, cis-normative. Um, I'm, I'm working on that, um, but that these, uh, these parts can be had by uh, people of all genders as well. The hymen, uh, it is not a virginity detector. Uh, it's not something that you pop. Uh, which is like a very violent way to think about uh, that situation. Um, and such tests in the U.S. are still, in fact, happening. Uh, there was a, a case um, of a celebrity who, take, who took his daughter and, in fact, may still do that uh, for, for hymen checks. That's not how that works. Um, there's, there is no medical way to assess virginity. Uh, virginity itself is uh, just a constructs that cannot be medically detected in that way. Um, and, and I want to emphasize that a lot of people have these ideas that these are problems happening outside of the U.S., um, but there's plenty happening inside the U.S., and we'll, we'll get into that too. The clitoris, it exists. Uh, the G-spot exists. Vaginal ejaculation exists. The fact that like those things are controversial, um, some, some of medical doctors still have doubts around this and we'll talk about that a little bit but it's it's a it's a really unfortunate statement of where things are today um some things i want to emphasize the clitoris um 
it it is not a source of heightened pleasure necessarily it can be but i think when we constantly talk about it that way it makes it sound like it's just a button right that you can just fucking just jab at like that and that sounds fucking horrible and painful um so it's heightened sensation uh which means you know be gentle with it at, at least at first maybe later um i don't want to get too much into that but uh yeah i think it's an important frame that it's sensation heightened sensation not heightened pleasure necessarily uh the g-spot it does exist the controversy that i can see from within the actual medical community um seems to be around the fact that it is a a kind of general zone again it's not a button um and that there are different degrees of sensation for everyone some people aren't like super turned on by g-spot stimulation um and that's fine uh it, it's still a spot that exists and also the name of it is named after a a, a male researcher um which like that that's some more example of like people were familiar with the there there were people familiar with the g-spot and we'll talk a little bit about that before a male researcher found it vaginal ejaculation it also exists not everyone who has a vagina has vaginal ejaculation um but uh if that if if it is still controversial uh even in uh matters of the uk actually has a law that says as a matter of law that vaginal ejaculation does not exist and uh the fallout of that is that any depiction in pornography or or any footage of uh of vaginal ejaculation as a matter of law therefore must be uh urine urination in in a sexual act uh which is considered legally according to the uk obscene um and is therefore that content is illegal um so that's some of the fallout from the idea that vaginal ejaculation does not exist and you can imagine you know a lot of stigma comes from that um and uh you know representation matters and it kind of again goes into this psychic genital mutilation uh like the the fact that uh these three key things that are parts of a body are even controversial in regard to their existence uh is a kind of of erasure of people um not to mention all the other myths around them Now we're going to move into the history. Um, and for that, uh, we are going to be uh, borrowing heavily from this amazing book. I cannot recommend it enough. It's a comic book. It's, it's uh, not academic or heavy at all. Um, it, the, it flies by because it's, um, well, the, the, I'll say the content can be heavy emotionally, um, but it is presented uh, very uh, entertainingly. Um, so some key things. Uh, tribal nations before uh, white supremacist, heterosis, patriarchal domination, capitalist domination culture uh, took over, um, they were far more egalitarian. That's what the equal sign there means. Um, which is not to say that every tribal nation uh, was not uh, problematic in some way, just as a, a generality, um, tribal nations, uh, of which there were tens of thousands, um, were, were more egalitarian than today's culture uh, in regard to a lot of things, but especially sex and gender here. It wasn't until after uh, the... Uh, white supremacist civilizational uh order took over uh that we had um there there's a couple different kinds of sexisms we're going to go through there's the ancient sexism which said that women are ruled by the body uh and that's where uh their lasciviousness and lustfulness and uh uncontrollability come from uh because they're ruled by these these hormonal urges uh, whereas men are ruled by higher things like reason and, and are more noble. And that's why we're fit to govern, we, we men. Um, and, and you'll see how uh, different iterations of sexism 
uh, contradict each other. And, and that's where uh, the vestiges of, of previous sexisms, which still play out today, uh, contradict each other. And surprise, the patriarchy is not an internally consistent ideology because um, injustice cannot be. Um, so that's ancient sexism. Uh, then in, in, in an appeal to uh, worship and, and the gods or God, uh, religious sexism uh, just relied on the fact that uh, it was God's will um, that women, you know, uh, were uh, not the, the chosen gender in that way, um, which was arguably depending on specifics um, of, of history and, and uh, culture, the specific culture in question, uh, it was more like a post hoc justification for the ancient sexism that was already there. Uh, then religious sexism came in and said, well, the reason it's like this is because it's God's will. Um, and uh, that had a couple things going on. One was that it put this stigma then on basically women with autonomy, including midwives, especially women who could encourage other women to have autonomy, to know their bodies. Um, and that's where uh, a lot of the witch burning comes from, uh, is this, uh, and in that transition from feudalism to capitalism, um, that uh, the book Caliban and the Witch talks about, which we've brought up in this uh, series before, excellent book by uh, Silvia Federici, who, who studies this uh, aspect of history. Um, that uh, there was then a professionalization uh, and elitism uh, put into the system of uh, medicine as a whole, but especially um, in for our conversation, uh, reproductive autonomy and and uh, women's health and, and those kinds of things. Um, and and so then doctors became the gatekeepers, right? You couldn't. Uh, have a healthy relationship with your body without seeing a doctor uh, rather than being able to organize uh, amongst yourselves and be empowered in that way. Once that kind of transition happened, uh, that paved the way for scientific sexism rather than uh, an emphasis on religion. Um, but if there, if we're moving towards scientific sexism, now you can't just say, well, it's God's will anymore. Um, now you have to point to uh quote unquote, scientific differences uh, between the sexes and genders. So uh, interestingly, uh, during religious sexism, there was actually a lot more sense that the, uh, the female and male bodies were equal in terms of being bodies, but one was morally deficient or whatever, whereas scientific sexism came along and then that needed to point to biological differences in order to justify the itself. Um, and there's a huge overlap of scientific sexism with scientific racism. Um, and uh, and that goes into vulvophobia, uh, just the fear of, uh, of the external genitalia um, there. Uh, the big example of this is someone named Sarchi or Sarah Bartman, uh, who died in approximately 1815. Um, but uh, she uh, is an African woman who was kidnapped uh, by uh, white human traffickers and showcased by one doctor uh, in, a, in a kind of human zoo situation. Um, and uh they they particularly emphasize that like the the large vulva that she had uh that they claimed was typical of her people um that that indicated that uh you know they're they're more animal uh in their in their biology and less human um and actually after she died uh, a different uh horrible white supremacist doctor came along and uh, stole her body uh, and uh, dissected it, but with emphasis on her her genitalia as well as her, uh, her buttocks, um, and uh, wrote, I think it was nine pages on her vulva and uh, I think one sentence on her brain. So uh, we also have a strong anti-masturbation movement uh, and uh, that 
uh, goes right alongside genital cutting. Um, you have probably heard of uh, Kellogg. Yes, that Kellogg. He was a doctor focused on uh, general well-being and promoting a healthy lifestyle. And so he tried to come up with cereals that were helpful to people. Um, and that is the same guy who uh, regularly performed clitoridectomies and advocated uh what is essentially the sexual assault of children to make sure that they were not masturbating um and uh just just really really bad uh, that's dr harvey kellogg serial man um moving forward from there is we go into the 19th century and this is more when the transition from seeing women as lustful to seeing them as asexual happens um and that's where we get the modern sexism where women want emotions and men want the physical urges of sex um and uh and that's why we get these contradicting ideas that women are hormonal but also they you know don't uh care about like physical pleasure and just want feelings um so we you can see some of the contradictions coming about uh that are are more modern so we have uh overlapping with the the anti-masturbation and genital cutting we have a strong sense of transphobia uh john money another former doctor uh still alive uh performed uh a lot of uh surgeries on on intersex infants uh determining you know what what sex or gender they would be and and assigning that onto them uh without any kind of you know waiting until they can decide or anything like that not to mention uh oh i'm sorry i got confused uh john money yeah uh did the intersex surgeries the clitoridectomies are that ex doctor that i was talking about who uh that's uh dr burt who is the one who's still alive and um he performed I believe it was uh hundreds if not potentially thousands of clitoridectomies many without consent um and had no scientific basis uh for this he it was just ideas he had right about how uh the the genitalia should be if we wanted to uh uh maximize pleasure in the way that he thinks uh need, we need to be having pleasure which is to say you know uh missionary sex man on top and like never no foreplay or like anything um and and when you force a human body to fit into like your idea you're gonna commit violence the clitoris again the fact that it's controversial that it even exists uh there are i believe still medical textbooks today that do not actually show uh the clitoris in in the diagram or 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 at least label it. The size of uh, the clitoris was unknown by white medicine, because again, uh, people were familiar with this. If uh, if you uh, cared to include their knowledge into your uh, pool of, of data, um, but unknown by white medicine until 1998, uh, which that it's an organ like the idea that we that there's would be an organ of the the of uh traditionally thought of as men's bodies that we didn't even know the size of or or was controversial about its existence until 1998 that's yeah there's a lot going on there there is something called the husband stitch which uh is practiced uh by some today uh it's controversial about uh how uh, frequent it actually happens, which it's hard to say. Um, but uh, the idea there is that um, during childbirth, it is entirely possible for uh, the external genitalia to tear somewhat. Um, and when that happens, it is uh, medically justified to stitch up that area. Um, there's something called the husband stitch, which is an extra stitch to uh, make things tighter down there in the idea that it will be more pleasurable for the the uh partner with the penis um and it's called the husband stitch it's a super gross name uh for a super gross thing and i'm, I'm gonna keep that gross name for it uh but um uh that 
that is done to uh, people without their knowledge or consent and can cause complications, uh, just as uh, Dr. Burt uh, ruined a lot of people's lives with his the complications that he created, and, and not to mention the the trauma of of enduring that. One thing I want to emphasize here is that like the very nature of sex, uh, which is to say like intercourse of penis and vagina, uh, that itself is a social construct. Um, and I'm going to say that again. Sex itself is a social construct. Um, they're not like obviously there are people who uh don't engage in penis and vagina uh, sexual uh, intercourse. Um, and uh, they are still engaging in sex. And there's a lot of different uh, I ideas and, and meanings uh, to the word sex for people based on you know whatever activities they're engaging in. Um, but all that is to say that uh, we cannot remove um, the, this, the medical information and the science from uh, the the social context that we're in, um, and we need to understand one and the other. And if we try to go into these things, not understanding that uh, we are influenced by white supremacist, heterosis, patriarchal, capitalist domination culture, we're just going to enforce it in incredibly violent ways, the way that uh, these people did. One one point I want to emphasize too in the conversation around genital cutting is um, it it does happen to uh, uh, male infants or or uh, infants with penises. Um, I'm I'm not in favor of that, um, and uh, and I you know I I condemn it. And there is something different about uh, quote unquote female circumcision versus quote unquote male circumcision. So I'm going to read this quote from a paper uh, that I have, have sourced in the, in the notes here, um, which is female circumcision reflects an underlying message about the status of women and an intention to affect their sexual function and behavior. Importantly, Male circumcision does not intend to affect the male's future sexual behavior or communicate a lower status of males. Um, so it's there is actually history in uh, the male circumcision being rooted in this idea that it would decrease masturbation. So, you know, you can argue that it uh, was originally designed to affect male sexual behavior, um, but that's certainly not the the primary reason it's performed today, um, which, you know, there it's like, there's talk around it having medical benefits, uh, but if, if it does, it's super minor. Um, and, uh, and I would certainly argue not, not worth the uh, pain and trauma that I imagine an infant would be going through. Um, but it does not have this, uh, this subjugation of a person based on their gender, the way that quote unquote female circumcision does. Um, not to mention that uh, uh, female circumcision is, has far more complications associated with it afterward. Um, and uh, it, it is entirely uh, rooted in uh, altering sexual behavior. There, there's no uh uh argument at all about uh having any health benefits um so uh while i am against genital cutting of any kind i do think that uh the genital cutting of uh the the clitoris or general vulva or quote unquote female circumcision uh carries with it more uh oppression behind it Again, my name is Pierce Delahunt, and I so appreciate your watching. Um, please do check out our offerings at My Sex Bio or, um, or what I have uh, to offer from my articles or videos or whatever. Um, so, so grateful for y'all and solidarity because uh, there's a lot that we need to, uh, to work toward um, and change. I appreciate your, your doing that. Thank you.